Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Celtic knot the easy way using Illustrator CS5's new Shape Builder tool. Most Celtic knots are based on a geometric shape. This one uses a triangle where the center of each circle intersects with each point of that triangle. So if I were starting from scratch, I'd draw one circle, then line it up with the triangle point, and I've got smart guides turned on here to help me, then just option drag to make copies and line them up with their respective points. I can delete my triangle guide now, and I want filled shapes instead of stroked circles, so I'm going to increase the point size of the stroke, then go up to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And now there are three intersecting shapes. The Shape Builder tool is grouped with the Live Paint Bucket and Live Paint Selection tools because they work in a similar fashion. When I move the cursor over the shapes, you can see that each segment is highlighted with gray. So rather than creating the Live Paint group first, the Shape Builder tool sort of does this all at once. To make this knot, I'm going to delete the parts that I don't need. And to delete a shape, hold down the Option or Alt key, and you can see that the cursor has a minus sign on it, indicating that those shapes will be removed. And this is a great thing about the Shape Builder. If you view it in outline mode, you see that there are no extra shapes left over, as you might get if you did this with the Pathfinder panel. Now I'm going to merge some shapes to form the under and over segments of the knot. It can be difficult to keep track of which is which, so it might help to have a sketch for reference. And I'll just drag to connect these shapes. The cursor has a plus sign on it now when it's hovering over objects that can be merged. To keep track of where I am, I'm going to change the color of each segment, and you'll notice that if I choose a different swatch, the selected shapes do not change color, but when I merge again, the new shape takes on that color. So I'll do that one more time to finish up this part of the knot. Change the color, then drag to merge. Now I've drawn another circle, and as before, I'll outline its stroke under the Object menu. I'll select All, then grab the Shape Builder tool and merge the shapes to make it look as though the circle is weaving through the other part of the knot. I can then take the Direct Selection tool and delete the parts I don't need. To really make the illusion work, I'm going to recolor the segments with some rich gradients. And If I take the Gradient tool, I can drag with a Gradient Annotator to carefully position the gradient so that the shape takes on a slight three-dimensional look with highlights and shadows. And there's the finished piece, super quick and easy, with the Shape Builder tool. So let's make another one. Here I have two circles and four lines, and I'll go ahead and outline those strokes. If you double-click on the Shape Builder tool, you bring up its options, and I'm going to click Cursor Swatch Preview. Now when I enter Shape Building mode, I get three tiny swatches on top of my cursor. If you use the Live Paint functions, this will be familiar. Now, instead of choosing color from the Swatches panel, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to scroll through the swatches. And if you look at the Swatches panel, you can see which swatch is selected as I press the arrow keys left, right, and up and down. Now, like I did before, I'll start by getting rid of the overlapping pieces that I don't want, and then I'll choose a color using my arrow key and start merging shapes. Notice that when the tool is in the act of merging, the tiny swatches disappear so you can see what you're doing. This is a personal preference, you can use it or not. And oops, I drug the cursor over an empty space there and it merged, so I'll undo that and carry on. And there's the finished knot, ready to be finessed with some gradients as before. The Shape Builder tool has become essential to my workflow, and I hope you'll like it too.